Hey YouTube, Lord Alex here. Here's the video for today. There's a shotgun on the table. It's a cheap, shitty shotgun. Well, not that bad. It's a Mavic 88 by Mossberg. Not a Mossberg fan. Not a uh, imitation Mossberg fan. But, cheap gun, does work. All the videos on YouTube, they say, oh, this is the most badass gun, this is my badass Mossberg, this is a really good gun, it's just a really nice badass gun. No, it's not. It's it's a cheap gun, and it, but it does work if that's all you have. So you have $400, you can go buy one of these, and you can go buy a high point 9mm or 40 cal, and you have two guns. They will work. They're not good guns, but they will work most of the time. This, I don't think, is known for having very many problems. High points, um, I'm not going to talk about that today. But, yeah, $400 you can spend on, you can spend $400 on a lot of things, but to walk away with two firearms for $400 can't be done. And it can be done for less than that if you buy them used. This is the sporter model with a 28 inch barrel it says here probably can't see it I don't know it says chambered for two and three quarters three inch shells 12 gauge 28 inch accu choke that's what they say they're all the same some have short barrels this one does not so I'm going to make it shorter because this is just too long but I'm going to make it shorter the right way. Now I've never done this before, but I've seen some videos and it, after talking to a couple people, everybody on YouTube uses a hacksaw. A couple guys use a bandsaw, and that, that's a better option, I guess, but I don't have a bandsaw. But even compared to a bandsaw, I've got a much better way to do this. That's going to give a much better result. You don't have to worry about a ton of filing at the end and grinding and all that stuff. Uh, I have a hacksaw. I have a bench grinder. Uh, I do have a bench vise. Uh, I have an angle grinder, electric angle grinder. But I'm not going to use any of those things. Hopefully today, to cut down this, uh, what's this called, a vent rib barrel, something like that. I'm going to cut it down to a little bit longer than 18 and a half inches, that's where most people go. Um, there's a lot of ignorant people around and um, some of law enforcement is more ignorant than you would like them to be. And uh, the knowledge of guns is not on par with a lot of us. So if I measure from where you're actually supposed to measure in here on the action on the barrel you get one measurement but then if someone were to look at it like this just measure from here it's a completely different measurement if I were to go 18 inches from the action and make a cut someone that's not so knowledgeable about guns and gun laws and, and things like that might say oh that's too short you're going to jail and I'm not going to risk that I don't need to have the shortest shotgun around I just want it shorter than this anyway so there's the shotgun we're going to cut and hopefully the only tools we're going to need are spring clamps to hold the barrel Dremel. This happens to have a uh, three foot whip on it that I like a lot. Don't ask me where to find it. I think I had to go to Harbor Freight and buy a whole fake Dremel that had this attachment and then throw away the rest of it because it was all crap. This is awesome. Gives you a lot more control over what you're doing instead of having to hold this big thing with all the uh, with, um, something spins really fast 
in a circle it, it uh, creates forces that makes it harder to handle I can't um, like a gyroscope I think that's the word I'm looking for anyway this alleviates that you can do just about anything you want with this this is for the vent rib where this rib right here that I'm going to cut I'm not taking the whole thing off I'm just going to cut it and leave it where I uh, am going to cut the barrel and uh, what I'm going to do is see there's two lines here took a look at it this is where I'm going to cut the vent rib up on top right in front of this uh, mount or whatever that is right there this thing that holds it on I'm going to cut it right here and then I'm going to cut the barrel here or maybe back a little bit I don't know somewhere between here and here and to do that I'm going to use this it's a tubing cutter it's meant for cutting round pieces of metal what's a shotgun barrel it's a round piece of metal the way this sits on there there's two rollers here there's a blade here you put it on you tighten it up See, just like a vise tighten it up and you spin it around the gun and it makes a nick in the or whatever the tubing spin it around the tubing and it's going to stay completely level because the roller is the way this sits on there you can't cock it different ways so it's going to be completely flat perfectly flat you tighten a little bit more and you spin it again you tighten a little bit more and you spin it again and you tighten it a little bit more and you spin it again you tighten a little bit more and you spin it again all right well my dog's going crazy there must be somebody in the yard uh, I live in a corner house and people tend to walk through my yard a lot anyway um, I'm gonna go outside and start working and uh, be back with y'all here in a little bit okay guys here I am uh, I've got the barrel strapped to this old grill here it's a smoker actually there's my whiskey drink no beer today the keg is empty um there's my big truck I'll do a video on it later so I've got it clamped down here I've got my mark and uh, oh crap I guess I need some safety gloves I had some a second ago I guess I set them down be right back okay I'm back I'm ready to dremel off this uh, vent rib here got some safety glasses I'm not wearing a shirt I'm not worried about that I hate getting metal in my eyes it's not fun so um, see if we can get started here start at low speed Okay, high speed.
All right, and I'm through it. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Now luckily on this barrel, I do have a mid bead. So I will still have a point of aim after I chop this off. And I might go ahead and back this up to here. I don't know, I'll work on that later. Um, if you can see that. Made it through the rail. I cut into the little support there just a little bit. It's alright. I guess if I have to, I'll bring a file out and I'll straighten that out a little bit. Um, now, put down the barrel. Oh yeah, there's a choke, choke in there. Modified choke. I don't have my choke wrench. Oh, it's loose enough anyway. No, no, I'm not gonna worry about pulling it out. But focus, maybe. Focus, maybe. Focus, maybe. Anywhere. There's a dovetail right there. And I think it's soldered on or welded here. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, just stick a screwdriver in here and twist it and see if I can't uh, force this side off. Screwdriver in the gap. It was made by my Dremel. And twist. Oh, look at there, it moved. Now, I've never done this before, but it uh, looks like it's working. Yeah, maybe not. It did open up quite a bit. It's moved quite a bit. I may have to... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. But, uh, cut it open up quite a bit. Let me see what I can do about this and uh, I'll get right back to y'all. Okay, I've got an idea. I just sprayed down this barrel here with some WD-40. All these little dovetail mounts. Oh, I'm off there. There we go. All these here on this end of the barrel and I'm going to set this down like that like that and uh, try to use the screwdriver to knock down the uh, vent rib some more Let's see if I can put this in here I'm not banging on the table because this is actually a, a nice antique table underneath here. So I'm not going to be banging on that a whole lot. So I'll this 2x6. Now I'm just twisting this a little bit more and I'm getting a little bit more movement out of it. But not a lot. It's getting pretty tight. So, uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera. But I'm going to try tapping on it. Oh, look at there. It's my empty keg. It's sitting there because it needs to get refilled. I'll take that tomorrow, I guess. Anyway, let's see what I can do here. I'm holding this thing with my chin. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Well, it's definitely not very comfortable holding it with your chin. Let me, uh, Try to move around on the side over here. See if I can hold it like that. Oh, not working real great so far, is it? Okay, well, I'm not going to bore you with all this. Let me get this thing off and then I'll bring you back. Alright, guys, this is what I ended up with. This is how it turned out. I didn't pull this rail all the way off because it, there's no really reason to. Uh, I just knocked it down a little bit, get a little beat up. I had to figure out that you have to remove this front, uh, front sight here because it goes down in there just a little bit farther than the bottom of here so it pokes down 
and it binds up on this first little support mount dealy hopper here which um, looks like that um, I tried to grab it and pull it off well this went right here it's a little weld that's on there I tried to pull it off with some channel locks that didn't work so good so I just laid it down on the board put a screwdriver on it like that and I think two taps with the hammer it flew right off so now I'm going to make the cut right about where this bluing stops where this little thingy was and what it's going to give me technically you measure from here right there but I'm gonna go ahead and measure from here like I said some people they just they don't know what they're talking about so I want to make sure not only do I know what I'm talking about but I want to make sure that there's no question in anything so if I measure this down from there which is the part that sticks out Actually, I want to say it's here. Let me uh, put this back in the, the action real quick. All right. That's what it looks like in the action. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and start it from right here see what that measures out. So the top end of this vent rib here measure from there which is you know a good let me see it's about a half inch past uh, right there anyway measure from there my little spot there 18 and three quarters inches which means my barrel is actually going to be uh, 19 and a quarter inches so I don't have to worry about anybody saying anything about anything and this is how I'm going to cut it tubing cutter and see how well this works put it on here Square it up with where I want it. Open it up. All right, get it on there. Get it tightened down. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. This video's gonna have a lot of jumps in it. So, anywho, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna line it up with where I want to cut that barrel. Scoot it up. Uh, right to the edge of that uh, cut there. I'm gonna snug it down. And now we're gonna spin it. Make sure it's nice and snug. You just spin it around like that. Snug it down. Spin it around. And snug it down. And you spin it around. Hmm. Well, it's not doing it quite like I wanted. It looks like it's trying to thread my barrel here. Let's try this again.
All right, well, I'm going to sit here and spin this for a little while, and I'll bring it back to you. All right, now we're making some progress here. I uh, found out if you don't have your tubing cutter on tight enough, it will kind of walk down the barrel and uh, do a nice little threading job in your barrel. So, crank it down nice and tight, just spin it, spin it, spin it. I just threw some WD-40 on here, maybe that will help a little bit. And tighten it. And then spin it. And then tighten it. Oh, this channel locks are getting old. Tighten it. And spin it. Nice cut in there. I don't know if you can see there or not. Nice smooth cut. And the camera doesn't like to focus. Okay, well, well, anyway, spin it. Takes a while. Just spin it, and spin it, and spin it, and spin it. And tighten it. And spin it. You'll notice when you tighten it, it's going to be hard to pull through there because it's cutting more metal. Oh, might be cutting through now. Loosen up just a little bit. Hmm. Let's see what the problem is here. Oh, well that's no good. Looks like I tightened it a little bit too much. You gotta do this slowly. And inject up the wheel on my tubing cutter. Well, that's alright. Let's see if we can't keep going here. That tells you be patient. Do it a little bit at a time. It's not smooth like it was a second ago. I'm sure it'll still work. All right, I'll come back when it comes off. All right, well, came off. Um, I got a little impatient, and I did screw up uh, this cheap little uh, tubing cutter a little bit. The edge on this little wheel here is, well, it's kind of flat now, actually, and oblong, maybe a little bit some nicks in it. You do need to tighten it with channel locks to get it tight enough to cut in, but do it slowly. Tighten it a little bit, spin it, be patient. I wasn't patient, and um, didn't turn out perfect. But, I do have a straight cut all the way around my barrel. 
there's a little bit of burrs in there. Um, probably just hit, a hit it with a file real quick. I didn't want to have to do that. But uh, the way this metal looks, it, I don't know. Um, no metallurgist, but it looks kind of like powder metal. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to finish it up, put the gun back together. Uh, I got a couple little nicks here from uh, when the screwdriver slipped. That's not a big deal. I'm going to be putting some cold blue on here anyway. So, uh, not worried about that and a cheap ass gun. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, I guess. And then uh, we'll be good to go. Alright, so now that it's all said and done, this is what she looks like. Not sure how I feel about uh, the extension of this rib past, just far past the bead. I don't know, I'll take a look at it. I, I don't mind leaving the rib on there and having a little exposed barrel here at the end. Uh, it's not a problem. Take a little scratch in the bluing around here from uh, the tubing cutter. Not worry about that either. It's a beater gun. Gonna get beaten. But uh, it's much more useful now, at least uh, for me. I have a big long hunting gun. I have a Benelli Nova. Or actually, it's a Supernova now. Um, so, this is going to be my little short beater gun. i find my tape measure. Looks like I cut... Eight, between eight and a half and eight and three quarters off the barrel. Did a little bit tougher look there. Not worried about the looks too much, but uh, how I'm going to swing around in my hallways and uh, more easily carried. And it looks like back to the receiver, I've got 18 and 3 quarters inches. So I shouldn't have anybody giving me problems with that because where I'm supposed to measure from is actually inside the receiver here. So. Definitely no problems. Turned out pretty decently. Um, might even go see if I could find some kind of big crazy muzzle brake for this thing. Like a, a cheap, I don't know, like maybe the, the Barrett 50 cal brake or them door breacher technical things or something. Maybe I can solder that on here or something. I don't know. But uh, there's the Phoenix product. I think it looks... Uh, Doesn't look too bad. When you handle it, you can kind of tell if you've handled better firearms. You can tell there's a difference. But it goes bang. And it will go bang when you need it to. So, uh, yeah, there's my video. Now I gotta piece all these parts together and make it into one video instead of nine or however many times I'd stop the video. But, um,. Yeah, this is Lord Alex. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all the other fun stuff. And there will be more videos. This was supposed to go a little bit smoother, but like I said, I've never done it before. Uh, not bad for a first attempt. I think it went good. Like I said, I still have that, which was the mid bead, is now my front sight. It's, uh,. almost five inches from the tip of the barrel but when I line it up well now it looks like a front side to me uh, can do it in camera there we go
Maybe. It's in there aiming at the original site too. Anyway, it works. And I got a small house gun, beater gun, and whatever I decide to use it with. Use it for. Sorry.